everybody is like self-motivated. Everyone knows how to get stuff done by themselves. So everybody knows what they need to be doing and how they need to do it and when it needs to get done. Kind of how any small company that does high volume runs. That's the thing too, I, I think that maybe people don't know about our company that this will show them is that it's a really small staff that's actually running like a pretty like big. And that's kind of the only way something like that works. You know, a company like this is either like a small staff where everybody's just doing their own thing, or it's like way more people. Everybody sort of takes care of their own position and they all sort of look after each other. They're also interdependent, you know, that I think that they sort of have to rely on each other. So they all can kind of keep each other in line to make sure that everything is, you know, getting done and staying on schedule. Um, so I tend to have a hands-off approach to dealing with my employees. Not like some other companies I've worked for where there was always a person you had to answer to. It comes from Zach first, right? So this is his company, so whatever his ideas are uh, or his inventions are to keep people inspired. But then from there, we all kind of manage our own areas and we all relate with one another, so we have to keep it moving. So um, I would say that everybody has a, a task at keeping things positive. Uh, Eric Sexy? I think I first met him at a party. And when he told me his name was Sexy, um, I was like, wow, that's interesting. Zachary Vex and Eric Sexy. Sounds like he'd be a good employee. He's been a friend of mine for a while. Over 20 years. He's incredibly strong. He can pick up almost anything. Out of all the people who've worked here, he's probably the only person who's ever yelled at me. He'll get especially upset with me if he thinks that I'm doing something that's not good for the company. I talked about making cheaper products, for example, recently. I talked about introducing a uh, loss leader, and his reaction to that was, we're not a loss leader kind of company. He's got the strongest opinions of anybody. And it's important to have people like that around, you know, you gotta have somebody who's gonna tell you exactly what they think, rather than just going, no, that seems like a good idea, which is not always the best thing to get for a reaction. I mean, Eric's the one who just keeps the machine running, basically, I know. His office is literally in the inventory. You know what I mean? So it's like, he's putting everything together, he's shipping stuff out, he's communicating with all of our dealers. He's a biking enthusiast. He's always been kind of a jock, likes football and likes to like sports, you know? But he also is very like Buddhist in nature. Super good guitar player. Likes to soak up live music and likes to talk about nerdy stuff and guitars. And... I don't mean this in a pejorative way. He's a little bit of a perfectionist. He takes what he does really seriously. And, uh, you know, I think it's a good guy to be around. Eric, Eric will give you the shirt off his back. There's, there's many, many stories of Eric, you know, kind of helping out the person that's been in a pickle or being a buffer in a tense situation. So, yeah. Zvex, this is Charles. Charles is very organized. Um... He just gets stuff done, and he has a plan, and he makes charts. Super intelligent, like way smarter than me. And, but he's, he's, he's also like really excitable. Like if you get him talking about like 80s hardcore or drumming, his, it's all like his eyes light up. He gets really excited. He's a nice guy, but he, he can be pretty intense. He's pretty friendly. If, you know, if you play by the rules, he's awesome. But if you if you try screwing him, he, he can be a little bit, uh, a little bit, I don't know, I keep saying the word intense. Uh, Charles, I've known for quite a long time. Uh, plays in a bunch of different bands. He's a drummer, he's an awesome drummer. He's very personable, he's smart, he's well read. I didn't know he was really looking for a job at the time, but for me it was kind of like, yes, that's gonna work. His way of approaching sales is much more from a marketing standpoint so he's gotten us to focus a lot more on doing uh, video for uh, internet. Charles also is the only person in our company who's got two kids and uh, so he's a little bit busier. <laughs> he's always he's always uh, taking off you know like I gotta go I gotta pick up the kids you know but when he gets messages they pop up on his wrist too so if you're sitting and talking to him he'll glance at his wrist like he's getting bored with you or he's got something more important to do and then if he scowls, you'll think that it's something that you said, but it's not. It's him looking at the messages going, why are they bothering me? 
<laughs> so <laughs> he's kind of an interesting character to have hanging around when you're trying to get things done. Ollie's kind of like a cat, but I think like once you've shown Ollie that like, you know, you're, you're legit, um, he's like super cool and like really fun to hang out with. Sometimes people read him wrong, like, like this guy seems a little standoffish or whatever. He feels out of situation and that's also good, you know, it keeps people from taking advantage of him. I think he's got a little bit better of a bullshit detector. He's an engineer. Uh, he's works hard, he's quick at what he does. Some of it's basic and some of it's critical listening. So I can't just have anybody do it. I need somebody that is, speaks the language, a guitar player, somebody with, with a pair of ears that I can trust. Um, he's extremely enthusiastic. He's, he's probably closest to Tommy and they spend a lot of time talking about music. They, they like those same bands a lot. I kind of have to pry them apart, you know? I gave all these space in my office just so that because every time I walked in, they were always like, oh, and I'm like, okay, I don't know if this is accomplishing anything. I'm not sure exactly what's happening here, but <laughs> I think you'd be able to work more easily in a bigger space if you had more space. A very smart kid. We both uh, bonded because uh, we were both debate students in high school, so we kind of like connected that way. He's also in a lot of bands and records music, and so he's really good with audio and video. Wide variety of tastes and of voracious appetite for information. I can say things to him and he'll be like, no, 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 it was like this, you know? So we'll spend a little time vibing off of each other that way. Tommy is super introverted, um, and that's not a bad thing, it's a really good thing. Technically speaking, he's also really creative. So he helps design a lot of the pedals, he does all the repairs, and uh, has this ability that he downplays, like he doesn't know that he's good at. That's the impression I get from him, is that he doesn't, isn't aware of that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I can't do that. Like, I, I don't know very many people who can, you know? And he's just, you know, he's like, mm, whatever. We do a lot of stuff together. Um, I know Tommy pretty well now, and he takes a lot of responsibility and a lot of weight at the company, um, too. So a lot of the stuff that I do, I can't do without Tommy. And I am always having to go over there and talk to him about something. Um, but yeah, he's also always tinkering and working on something cool. Um, and he and I are always working on some sort of weird video or something. Uh, Tommy stepped into the repairs part of it, but he's kind of expanded what he does beyond that. He's a great liaison between touring bands that are coming through town, how to get them to come in and visit. He knows what that, the life they're living, he, know, he can talk to them in a way that, that uh, is legit. Tommy is a musician. I think if he could do anything, he would probably want to spend part of every year on tour. He's about to go out on tour with a, with a band right now for about a month. He's very curious about the history of pedals and he's fascinated with the electronics that goes into it too. And so his curiosity about that has led him to building his own stuff. And when I saw that he was doing that, I thought, hmm, maybe it's time for you to start doing prototypes. So I've had him build prototypes and develop products. So he developed the, the 59 sound, for example. All the things that I would do as an engineer myself, I just walked him through the basic rules because he had never had an exposure to that. He captured the texture well enough so that when Eric came out and tested it when Tommy was done, Eric was completely blown away at how good a, a capture of the feel and of the texture he got from that amp. And that was his first try in working on a, on a pedal, which was pretty neat. I see a lot of future for Tommy in working on design. I feel like I'm still getting to know Zach. Um, and Zach's pretty well documented. You know, he likes to make videos and, and do stuff and he's been around town and he's he's a persona. If Zach has a management style, I think it's just kind of like, oh, all right, hey, we're doing this. So, um, yeah, it's, it keeps it interesting. Every Friday over one summer, he would call up and talk to me. And I would look at my watch and I'm like, I've been talking to him for like two and a half hours. And he would be re talking about like these different inventions that he wanted to do. 
you know, and they're all over my head. So he's really inspiring and can be very motivational. His stories are awesome. Zach is, I mean, hate to beat a cliche to the ground, but he's, he is sort of a mad scientist. Um, it's really interesting because when he uh, gets a new idea, he's, he's almost like a kid at Christmas who's like, hey, I'm this and blah, 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 blah. And he's talking fast and like pacing back and forth between the offices. And that's when I know he's got a new idea brewing. Sometimes I have to shoot video because he's got this great idea and he's like throwing out all the, the science jargon. So I'm like, all right, I better videotape this because half of this is over my head. He's definitely a all in kind of guy. You know, I don't think Zach half-asses anything. My skill set's just gone exponentially just by like being around him. I think just from the logos, he likes to use the photography style he likes. Um, you can tell he's kind of got this like old school vibe to him, like old school science teacher vibe to him as well. He's a genius. Yeah, I don't use that word lightly. I really his brain doesn't work like normal people's. He's just kind of on another level. He got his bona fides as a, as a kind of a mad scientist guy right at the beginning. He wasn't one of the earliest ones. He was kind of one of the young guns that came along after the, the forefathers of the industry. And he gained and earned that reputation as somebody to watch. And uh, he hasn't lost it. We are in Zach's office, uh, so there's prototypes and weird stuff all around. Um, I won't say what it is, whatever, it's a secret. Over here, uh, there's some sort of like prototype circuits. Um, some for stuff that actually have been produced, uh, some for stuff that hasn't been produced, maybe never will be. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. There's more over here, too. This bench is just kind of like littered um, with that stuff. Uh, there's also some parts for like a modified guitar. Over here, there's like this rack of sort of like mystery guitars um, that have some like Zvex circuitry in them. And some of them are like this blue one are hand painted. And there's more back here, but I don't think you're allowed. Zvex is one of the lead news stories today on Premier, PremierGuitar.com. Your, 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 your. Your, your vibroface has won the Premier Guitar Award and the review is showcased on the top of the What's News section on our homepage. Maybe it's a sign from Olympia that we should make more modulation. Hmm, could be. Huh. Maybe a modulated delay. <laughs> Where are the artists then? Where are the artists? Close this for privacy. We're we're not we're not here. <laughs> My artists like to be private, you know. Well, I don't think I should say anything about them. They just kind of hang out in their offices. I have I do communicate with them. It's not like they are secretive. I don't see them much. I, th I think we slide some food under the door at the beginning. No, just kidding. They've always been wonderful to me, great to work with, really good ideas. The hand-painted things, you know, that's Zvex did that first, and I think, I think the artists we currently have, you know, taken that tradition but brought it to a new level. Personality-wise, they're both really introverted uh, and very pleasant to be around. One of them is also does music. They're the first two in the entire building to have a rebuttal. So if you have an idea and you want to say, well, what if we did this? They're the first two to be like, no, that won't work. And this is the reason why. People don't really think about the fact that Zvex does hand-painted pedals, because like almost nobody else is doing it. If I was to say any like message about the artist, it's like just like appreciate all that goes into that. Because like if someone sends you some weird request or someone or you just work on your own, it's like that's your own design, that's your own like aesthetic art direction, and then your own like physical skill actually painting it. So yeah, every time we get a new tray of customs to get boxed up and shipped out, I'm always just like like in Tommy's office, just like, geez, look at this stuff. It's crazy. They're super friendly, you know. Certainly willing to talk to people, but when it comes to like promotional stuff that we do, they don't really care about that.
I prepared these notes, my thank you notes, at the Best Western this morning. Um, I'm not as good as Jimmy Fallon, so I have to work the notes. Uh, I just taught Tommy this song. Um, he's got sort of his own version of it, so you know, bear with us. You look really dapper today. All right. <laughs> work on the cue here. Thank you, germanium transistors, for being so temperature sensitive that nobody can find out what your gain is. Uh, that's the cue for you to laugh. <laughs> Very good. Very good. It's pretty good. See, Tommy can relate to that because Tommy tests all of our germanium transistors. Thank you, Ellis Island, for giving us Eric Sexy because you couldn't spell Sexa. <laughs> Thank you, California, for making us say that everything causes cancer, but being polite enough to end the sentence with, in the state of California. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, postal carrier, for not ringing the doorbell so Tommy has to go to the post office to sign for our packages. Thank you to all the digital marketing people and web designers who contact us with offers to trade their work for pedals. <laughs> and finally, thank you, Best Western, for giving us notepads that only have eight pages so I don't have to write any more thank you notes. And that really was the last one. <laughs> Thanks.